the wood looking pretty good. It's a, a vast improvement from what it was. And we still have to put the gimp here in the front with the nails. And the backs here, we had, last time we had uh, put the butt, I think the buttons, and, and we got them fitted in. We try to minimize the gaps if we can, um, but this piece is full of gaps. I mean, we even had, you see on the, uh, the original, that we had these little pieces over here, um, little pillows they look like. I have to do the same thing. It's not exactly, you know, when they made it, you can see this, they weren't exactly incredibly good. This is all the way up to there, and that one there is bottomed out right over here. It ain't gonna go any higher. You got a little gap there, but it's good. And you're really not gonna get much better than that. These backs are all the way in. We're gonna screw them in there. We're gonna fasten them. We're gonna use different screws than those crappy ones that they had in there before. There's a lot of toiling that goes into something like this that you spend a lot of time. You're trying to figure out the, the right approach to fix it and make it strong. They didn't have anything. Originally, they had this and that one over there, which we haven't put on, but we're gonna put on tonight. Um, we, I put them back even close to, to the old holes. And I even put, I put some new screws in there. And originally, had those square drive nails. So I put screws in there and I put some glue behind there. And I wasn't about to have a whole bunch of messy braces back there. I had this shiplap board I have from when I worked on my, my camper after a tree had fell on it. And it just fits so good. It has a little groove here. And, it's, and, it, and it, it just was nice. I just felt that it would, it would be just the, the, what we're looking for, just to make it a, a little bit stronger than what it, than what it was, because there was nothing in here to support it. So what happens with this back is when it, it goes, if you were to lean on it backwards, it's gonna wanna end up pushing down. So I hot glued that to that. It fit in there nice. I had these two pieces already cut, equal, equal sizes. And then I put a couple screws there and I made a, it made a real difference as far as how strong it is. And it's not gonna take up any room. So it'll, it'll be good for what we're looking for. And this little area over here is not important. Um, we just wanted the strength in the middle here. Um, we're gonna put that other piece in there. We haven't seen this since episode one. You can see here that it was cut with like, like an ax, probably some sort of knife or, or something like that. And they kind of whittled like this and they got to get the shape that they wanted um, for down here. And that's all, it's not exactly the great design, but these are the way they, uh, I've seen these, these they, if anybody who's ever worked on these, they're made just like this. And generally these pieces are always, for the most part, in the older homes. They never had them out in the middle. The homes weren't that big. They were always up against the wall. And a lot of times um, you'd see like a black, dust cover type cambric material or something in the back, inexpensive, because they're like, why, why put expensive fabric on the back of this if it's, um, you know, it's never gonna be seen. But we're gonna put fabric on the back of this because we have it and we're gonna do it and it's gonna be, and it's gonna look really nice. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, it's hot, it's getting hot now. The hot, the hot wood glue is nice because it takes up gaps. I mean, you got some mega gaps here. You see that right there? That, look how it fits with that piece of wood right there. So this is pretty much, I guarantee, the, the right location as it was. And you can even see up here where there's two marks right there. And just by me fitting it there without even looking at it, we can tell the two holes there. And these old holes are, believe it or not, they're, they're, they're gonna be fine. It's like a pre-drilled hole, that pretty much. It'll work good. So we're gonna do some, some. Like this. And how I checked it, it was good and hot. As I told Ed to touch it and uh, put, put a little on his hand. And, if, and he did, and he jumped all around and was done. Good. Pretty much. Well, we're going to use all the old holes. We don't need to make new ones for this. Sometimes over here, these are been reupholstered so many times that 
the wood is, they would, you, they would nail it every time and then they have to pry those nails out and it just makes a, it could be hairy. I mean, you gotta do the best you can to get it strong and this is, like I said, this isn't something that you're gonna watch the Super Bowl on, okay? This is gonna be something that you're gonna respect and have it off to the side and you're gonna sit like a human being on it. And you know, and that's it. And if you, if Ed thinks he's gonna come over and sit on this, he's gonna get a smack. I think it ain't gonna happen. So we want it nice. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna put some screws in there and we're gonna bring those backs so they stay permanent now. And I can see it get pulled in. I wanna get it up, especially up top here. If you're gonna have a back like that, that you could take off like that, you could hide stuff in it probably. You know, money, grandma could hide money on there and stuff. She probably, I've seen money stuffed in these things and stuff before. We pulled out a, an old dime out of here. of these backs are a little different. Let me see it in the cushion here. This one's lined up nice though. That's looking good. It's in there permanent now. You know the old pieces they just weren't really you can't say that they weren't made well because they're still here. The styles dictate a lot how a piece of furniture is going to go together. A place where my dad worked in the 50s that used to make brand new type furniture and my father used to ref, uh, reference them to as what they call a knockdown job. And they had very broad arms, they're very modern, like you would see in the, in the 50s advertisements where they were selling a television set, you know, you'd sit there. And that was the, um, the style uh, that, they, that they had, very flat arms. And it was, it was the younger generation furniture. They made nice furniture back in the 50s, but that was the inexpensive stuff. Um, but it was still, it holds up by today's standards. It was well, it's well made. The idea in the shop is always to stay busy and you, you don't be tied down by something, uh, you know, when you can do something in the meantime. All right, so we're gonna measure here for the arm here. The out, this is what they call the outside arm. And we're gonna have over here, we got a big gap there, but that's just the way that these things are. There's just nothing we can do. We're going to put a piping in there and try to absorb some of that as best, best as possible. It just wasn't going to get any closer than that. And the wood is, I'm sure, it has a lot to do with the way they made it. So what we're going to do here, we're going to say 28 inches wide. And over here, we want it to go to the bottom here. So 28 by 20. So we're gonna do make two 28 by 20s. And let me get my chalk. So 28. Twenty-eight by twenty. And we got that. We cut it. It's very ribbed fabric. It's got a uh, kind of a Always mark the top and the bottom. Put an X. X is always up. Well, I can't really do the X there as much as I could if it would be a white dot. We're going to cut the outside back too. Well, so we're going to say 84. 84 by the high point here. 84 by, say, eh, we could do 29. Wow. 84. That's all we got left. 84. Exactly. Isn't that amazing? Edward, what does that mean? The spirits we released all these years, and he's helping us right now. So. It looks good, though. This piece is really coming out nice compared to what it is. It's strong. It's, and it's, it's got a lot of a lot of appeal to it. And even though it has some veneer in areas that's missing and peeled, it's original. It has a story. Um, somebody might have been hundreds of years ago that damaged it. 
I'm sure there's a story <laughs> when it ended up in a barn when it wasn't really so nice looking after a while because it did come out of I ended up picking this up out of a out of a horse barn that's where it come out of and what we're gonna do too we got some piping here that was made uh, the well and we're gonna, I'm gonna cut some small pieces here So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna try to get this ready over here. Um, and you'll see the method to my madness over here, what we did last time. I can't even tell you how long ago it was. All I know is I'm getting younger. I'm not getting older, I'm getting younger. The rest of you are getting older. What we wanna do is we don't wanna have the welt make a big ridge. So what we're gonna do is cut it back a little bit so we can work. And we're gonna gut it like this. And you see, you're not going to see that. We don't want it to be bulky. There's no need for that. And I got long staples in here because the wood is really bad. It's in, it's, you know, it's not bad, bad, bad in a sense, but it, it needs a long staple. And we're going to do it like this. And the arm is going to go right across here and around here. We got that shape there. Try to give it a little bit more fluidity and then we're gonna take this we always have the pattern going up and down so we're gonna go like this this is called blind tacking this is used a lot in in furniture more the old you know the newer furniture has different ways of solving these problems um, but you always want to staple close close as you can to the, to the well. See, I'm going off of that. I'm gonna have to go on the angle a little bit to, to get that it's, it's on the edge of the wood there. No need for padding on such a small piece like this. I just flatten that out. There, that looks good. See right here? Even though we we don't have we're like we need when they just made it they just were you know they didn't really care they tacked right there see what I can do with that it's going to be I can use cardboard tape there's a way we can do that build it out we'll see how this works I should do it but you never know yeah, see it's on an angle like that. Sometimes these little jobs like this are a little bit more difficult to do. Little areas like this curve and so we tuck that in there, that corner of that. we can with these weird designs that they had. Next thing we're gonna do is the outside arms. We're gonna have to make some strapping because we wanna retain a lot of this shape, okay? Um, over here, we got some of this design right here. Um, we want it, and the strapping keeps it from being pushed in. You're going to lose some of it because when you pull from here to here, you're, it's going to want to—it's going to come out a little bit like that. Even though this wood here is this brace, which was the same type of design as it was before. And that's going to give it a little support. I'm gonna take the welt now. Something like this would be kind of good over here. Right here. I'm gonna go right there. So we 
we're going to do is, this is the idea here, the welt, we're going to do the best we can. It's always difficult, but we want to have it look like this. And we got a little trick we can do to help that. You can see how much work it is doing it, but with having it like this, we're going to have to hand stitch it. And a lot of these pieces are, that's the way they did it. So that's what they had in mind when they made it. You have to do the same thing. So I'm gonna put some cardboard, the heavy cardboard tape, and then I'll push it up against that, hold that against there. So when I stitch it, there's no real stress on this. If this was an inside arm, a body going up against that, it'd have to be much, it'd have to be strong. This is not so much because it's the outside. Nobody touches it. It's just there for looks. A box of staples, <laughs> see? Jinxed it. So we got that, and now we're going to blind tack that. This is the outside arm. I'm gonna make my a line right here. You just gotta be careful with this fabric because the chalk lines can stay forever in this type of fabric. It let's me know where I'm gonna match these lines up here that little dot with dot. You could have it off a little bit. You know, when something's stretched, like over here, to go get the form it, and this fabric is stiff, uh, things are gonna go out of time. If something's pulled on this side really hard, and this one here is left pretty natural, um, you're gonna get different speeds. So what we wanna do is we wanna get the best we can. It's just good practice. This is again called blind tacking. Go like this and you gotta put it, when you put cardboard tape on, you have to put it right up against the welt. You can just put another layer of cardboard tape over that and bring it up closer to it. It'll allow you to do it and you won't see it or nothing. The age of the piece here. We're ready to cover it up permanently. So, 1828, that's what it appears to look like to me. And it would fit the, the age period of this piece, absolutely. And they would do that, and that's old chalk marks. That's probably the same chalk, piece of chalk that he did his button pattern that we talked about. And now, we're gonna cover it up nicely. Um, so like it hasn't been many, many years. This type of fabric will drive you nuts. What you want to do is you want to bring it as close as you can to it without tacking over that cardboard. I mean, you don't want to go past that line because it'll show on the other side. And then we're gonna pull, staple down here. Now we're gonna trim this. <laughs> Halloween special. I love Halloween. I like Halloween better than Christmas. Christmas, I have to spend so much money on presents. And they don't get anything. I was a big joke in my house is I'm like, I never get nothing, but I always spend all this money on stuff. But, oh, and then I get the line that, you know, it's better to receive than to, uh, better to give. It's better to give than to receive. Oh, whatever. But Halloween, oh, the fun I had when I was a kid. Halloween. Smashing pumpkins and, oh boy, what fun. And pull it, we'll try to get some of the shape like I told you before. It's hard to do it, especially with that ribbed fatter fabric because it wants to go up and down nice don't like to go around corners trim the excess and then 
do when it gives a it gives a fuller look though. We want to pull it straight up and down is what we're doing now. So we're gonna pull it like that and we could loosen that up, but I don't know. We'll see what we can do. What I'm doing with this, I'm doing the staples halfway in. It acts like pins. I'm gonna hold it while I'm sewing it. And spaced it. And those pins are just there to hold it so that I can stitch it. And then as I go, I pull the pin, I pull the, the, the thing out. And I'm not gonna pull the back right now because it'll pull everything off in the front here. But let's see what I can do down here. I'm gonna have to trim it. You know, with other pieces that can handle being tossed around, and they're not so old, well, you'd tip it over and you could, you'd work on this in various angles. Can't pull it too tight with this line. If I loosened it up down there, I could probably get more more shape in there, but because you see what happens with the line, even though that that's straight up top and over here, when something's going in like that and all that, these lines don't look so straight, but they are. That's the way it is. It's conforming to it. It, it gives it a different look, you know, this type of fabric. So I'm just trying to see. I don't think that I can get any more of that shape out of it that I'd want. I think I'm more apt to just leave it alone like this and have it, you know, like that. Certain fabrics, I, you can get more of that out, but this is so stiff, it just won't let me. So we're going to sew it now. I'm going to do some hand stitching like they did many, many years ago. So they were spitting tacks and sewing by hand. Almost like cavemen, practically, no? So my father used to say, how can you sew from different up and down? I could sew up and down, I can do anything. My father used to say, he couldn't understand that. And it would come out good, you know, but he only could sew one way. I could sew every way. It's even st so stiff, this fabric, just on this corner, it wants to fight because it's pulled tight. It's like Kevlar for crying out loud. It watches everything. Let's look at this. You gotta find the diamonds. You gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta look through all the oysters in order to get the pearl. See, don't line it up quite right. It goes off at an angle. Not the easiest way to sew, area to sew, that's for sure. That was my needle. You see how? It hides it, all that, you know what I'm saying? You got the edge of the wood there, and you won't notice it. When I was a little kid, I was hand sewing. I'm talking like seven, eight years old. My father did all his work like this. He never did use ply grip or any of the modern materials. And in the latter part of his years, he really, says that it helped him because he had a stroke and he felt that it was helping him, his hand-eye coordination, when he would sew, hand sew. So he was really, my father was really a hard liner when it came to doing this. And you can sew really fast too, I mean, I can sew really fast, but not these areas here because these are very curved and the fabric is very rigid. And you want to do a good job. Always. But it's come along real nice. And we 
and put on the dust cover, it'll hide the black. That's called cambric. That goes on last. And that'll cover up, you know, anything in there. Especially the old type springs like this. And as the contents would break down, the cotton and all that, um, the dust cover, uh, the cambric, it would keep it from going on the floor. And grandma wouldn't be going ballistic trying to sweep it up all the time. So it helps keeping that it's finely woven versus the stuff that goes on top is strong and, you know, big gaps in the weave and stuff, but it's, that's the burlap. Now we're gonna anchor it. But I think we're good for tonight. It's more important to me that these lines be straight up here. Um, so this is why I do it. I'm the artist and this is what I do. Some people may cut it and adjust it like this and you'd see it kind of, it would go in, it, it would be, it'd be more, it'd be cut in such a way that it would be more straight up and down. But to me, having these lines for such a gradual thing, it wouldn't look right. So next time what we're gonna do is we're getting ever close to the edge to, of completion. We're gonna do the outside back. And this outside back has got a lot of work here because we're gonna follow originally, you can see the tack line that they had was right above here, going straight across, which is the easiest way to do. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna bring it up higher and follow the curve. And that by doing that, it covers up a lot of the, the scratches from being up against the wall. This is from hitting walls in the house. This one probably happened 150 years ago. Not many people can see something like this being done in its original form, dilapidated, and bring it back to something that's very nice. And then we put some nails in the front. It's gonna, it's gonna look really, really nice. This old girl, this old girl's getting fixed up to go to the dance. You're gonna get evil. I'm gonna You're gonna get evil. You'd be like <clears throat> pressing those buttons, get all the worst things you could possibly surprise me with, and then me, I go, always go along with it. It's gonna make me a gorilla. <laughs> 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 <laughs>